Hello, I'm Interweb Studios, and today we ask Reddit non Americans, what do you think is in every American person's house? Peanut butter. I'm an American, and it is rare that I don't have peanut butter in my home. Because you are sensible and it's delicious. It's so strange that people in other countries don't really eat much of it. I eat some every day. Putting a little dab of it on a square of dark chocolate is my favorite thing. Do Europeans not like peanut butter? I assume it's sweeter over here or something because I watched a video of Europeans trying PB and J sandwiches and none of them liked it. It's available but not something everyone would have in their cupboards. I associate a PB and J sarni as part of US culture as well as a grilled cheese. Smashing sandwiches to be fair. I'm partial to both. As an American one absolutely love the adjective, smashing, please never stop saying this. Multiple different types of weird sauces. They take up a quarter of my fridge, I didn't realize this is weird. So many sauces. An entire refrigerator door with sauces. When your country's food is made up of parts of every other country's cuisine remixed and combined, you end up with all the sauces. What would my fridge be like without at least two salsas, chili garlic paste, harissa, soy sauce, fish sauce, mayo, mustard, ketchup, and chutney. A barren, sad, flavorless wasteland, that's what. Edit, all the folks informing me soy sauce, fish sauce, etc. don't need to be refrigerated, I'm aware, thanks. I find that the flavors remain better for longer when I refrigerate them after opening. As an American who married into a Canadian family, I think Canadians have Americans beat on this. So many of the Canadian fridges I've looked into, barely have room for actual food because of all the condiments. And when you wonder why terrible pizza chains like Pizza Pizza survive, it's because they don't really care about the pizza. It's about the dozen, dipping sauces, that come with it. A sofa that faces a studio audience. When you walk into your living room and you hear the applause, it really helps you get through your day. Or when you walk into a friend's house and all the ladies do the hot guy scream. Drywall. Lots of drywall. It's fire safety. Our houses are built out of wood, not stone. Even the brick ones just have brick on the outside. Drywall is just gypsum plaster between two sheets of paper to give it strength so that it can be made into 8x4 segments used in construction. Back to the fire safety. Gypsum plaster absorbs water from the air and can take 2 plus hours to burn through. So it gives you crucial time to exit a house during a fire. Do you not have drywall? Apparently they tried to put drywall in new homes in the U. K. But people kept eating it. Pair it with some beans and you're good to go. Pico de Wallo. Pla plastic bags. A plastic bag filled with plastic bags. Though a lot of stores are going plastic bag free lately, depending on your state. The bag of bags is a time-honored tradition in many American homes. Well they just started making slightly thicker plastic bags, claiming they're reusable and charging you 10 cents to buy them. Still tons of single-use plastic bags all over. Although to be fair that process has inspired more people to bring their own cloth bags. They've always been reusable. They're bathroom and bedroom garbage bags. Edit. The bedroom garbage is for scrap fabric when I'm sewing. At most the grossest thing that goes in there is empty energy drink cans. And dog poop bags. I never understood why people would buy special bags to pick up poop when you can just use the grocery bag. Air conditioning. I think this is where the size of the US comes in. Some areas would seem uninhabitable without air conditioning and or heat. But some places you wouldn't really need one or the other. Yay, in New Mexico most of our population growth didn't happen until after AC became a thing. Scorching summers and freezing winters. That garbage disposal thing I always see in shows and movies. You know what that shit both scares and surprised me. America is the country where you can win a lawsuit after putting an explosive substance in a microwave because the warning letter didn't specifically say not to put explosives in the microwave, yet somehow they have put high-velocity sharp blades in their sinks. I can only imagine how many idiots have lost fingers because of this shit. A lot of that reputation for excessive litigiousness is undeserved, frankly. A large part of the reason Americans sue more often is because this country is less strict about many industry and business regulations than most of Europe, and the assumption is that people who are harmed will seek remedy through the courts. 
many of the things Americans sue over would not have been allowed in the first place in other regions. For obvious reasons, corporations have an incentive to portray lawsuits against them as frivolous and unreasonable, and they have large PR budgets to ensure that many people hear their side of the story. Sometimes this involves emphasizing the cases of genuinely frivolous lawsuits while passing over legitimate ones in silence, sometimes it involves outright dishonesty. This is a well-known phenomenon in the legal field, enough so that it has its own derogatory nickname, tort tales. That poor woman who got burned from the McDonald's coffee is a famous example of exactly this. I'm convinced almost every American has a mountain of pillows on their bed. Not a mountain but perhaps a small hill. A hill I'd die on. It's very comfy, that's for sure. And our couches. I like to build a nest. Laundry dryer. In my country almost everyone dries their laundry on a wire outside, so the concept of a dryer is baffling to me. I only see them in American movies and shows. Do majority of you have it or not? The majority of us either have it, or have access to one such as a shared laundry room in an apartment complex. Those who don't have one usually go to something called a laundromat where it's basically just a room with a dozen or so quarter-operated washers and dryers. Almost no one, and no one I know, uses a clothesline to dry clothes. Where I live it would be a nightmare, it's either raining, so humid you can dang near drink the air, or snowing. Sometimes it'll do all three just to make us question why we live here. Thank you for explaining. I live in Serbia and most of the time you can dry your clothes outside, except winter obviously. But one time while at my sister's I had to dry some clothes for vacation that was the next day. The weather was bad and you simply can't find a dryer anywhere here. So we had to rig a portable AC unit with two hair dryers behind and put the clothes on a rack to dry it lol. And that was me being lucky, if not for that unit I would have had to dry each one with a hair dryer. A garage fridge. Filled with beer and frozen boxes of crap from Costco. It's very handy. Yeah I have a giant 7 feet x 3, basement fridge, full of beer and stuff from Costco. Guilty as charged. Just a literal block of cheese just chilling in the fridge. I'm certain they woke up randomly at 3 a.m. and go, OMG cheese sounds good right now. So, I live in Wisconsin. My dad is actually a cheesemaker. I joke about the cheese fairy visiting me, because whenever I get low on cheese, more just appears in my fridge. I love cheese, but my husband loves it more. He will actually just hack of a big 2-inch thick hunk of cheese, and eat it. Jeans. I wear blue jeans 365 days a year. What do you do on leap years? Birthday suit. A dishwasher. Wait, we have more dishwashers than other high-income countries? I mean, I could live without one, but I really don't want to. It uses so much less water than handwashing and makes things way cleaner. They legit just come out more sanitary. As close to being able to auto-clave your shit after every meal. A gallon of milk in the refrigerator. Multiplied by the number of teenage boys in the house. My son recently moved out for college and for the first time in 18 years, I actually had to pour out spoiled milk. It's still weird for me to reach for a quart not a gallon. In our two adult household, three gallons is the norm. My husband has never liked the taste of adult beverages, so instead of having a beer or two after a long, hard, day of work, he comes home and downs a couple glasses of chocolate milk. One of those giant containers of orange ball food. Honestly I wish I had a container of cheese balls right now. I know you mean cheese balls but I'm just imagining pellet food for Americans. Like someone's keeping a tiny redneck in one of those wire hamster cages with the tubes. There's a water bottle on the side filled with diet Pepsi and a food bowl full of tiny cheese balls with a few bits of hamburger mixed in for variety. I think the fact that there's a home gym, hamster wheel would sell a lot of folks on the idea. Alright we are going to start the lightning round a little earlier because a lot of these were just a few things. If things repeat, well, so here we go. As an American one was expecting guns, but ranch dressing hurt for some reason. Oh oh, the washing machines where you put everything in the top. This fascinated me when we visited the states. They're huge. Fridge with ice dispenser built in. Individual cans or bottles of soft drinks. Cereal. Eggs in the fridge. Large quantities of over-the-counter drugs in huge bottles. 
Costco $3.99 for 500 Benadryl and $5.99 for 500 Ibuprofen for the win. Every American household have a drawer full with random shit, dyed batteries, screws, shoelace etc. Ranch dressing. Mac and cheese. Popcorn setting on their microwave. A garbage shredder thing in the sink. Industrial quantities of soda. Blueberry breakfast pancake mix. Assorted boxes from Amazon. Dad's ugly comfy chair. Coupons. An outside porch. Basketball net. Basement. Walk-in closet. Top loader washing machine. Triangular college flag. Outside post box. Bedroom window that teenagers come and go by at night. Front doors which aren't locked. A thermostat. Something that is individually wrapped that doesn't need to be individually wrapped. Peanut butter, shoes indoors, garbage disposal, basement, ranch, guns, Bibles, top load washer, American flag. And my favorite comment that best describes this thread. Came here looking for jokes, found a bunch of people describing my home. And with that I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for sticking around all the way until the end of the video. As a reward here's a cute dog. Since you are here don't forget to like, subscribe and comment a weird thing you have in your house. Until next time.